Working from home and social distancing have become commonplace in the world today. Because of this, I want to talk through some of the remote test monitoring capabilities that are available in Vibration View and other resources that are available through technology today. I want to use this to demonstrate how to set up and use the web server capabilities in Vibration View. And I'm also going to walk through how to set up a live stream to YouTube using a webcam. This could be used to help with the current situation, but also is very useful for test labs with customers who might need to remotely view a test and no matter the situation in the world. First, we look at the setup of Vibration View web server. In configuration, web server. Now this is enabled through a combination package called web and email. The email features allow Vibration View to send an email or text message to a defined address based on a few user selectable parameters. We have another video that walks through how to set this up and different ways to manipulate this. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the web server. The web server is simple to set up so long as you are trying to access the web server through a PC that is on the same network as the PC connected to the VR9500. For this video, I will talk in terms of using my personal desktop, which I have VPN access to from the real world, and a control PC, where, which is connected to my 9500 and is running my test. So in order to make this work, what I will need to do is set up the web server on my control PC, the PC that is connected to my, Viber, my VR9500. And then I will remote desktop in from a remote location to my personal desktop that I can then use to access the web server to see what is happening and use these various features. The Vibration View configuration is found in the global config dialog under the web server tab. Here I can set up a server address, create usernames and passwords for the three different levels of access. First, in enable Vibration View web server, this gives users the ability to view what is happening, but they can't actually interact with anything. There's no download capability, there's no interaction, it's just a viewing tool. The second level of access, the allows access to stored data so that I can view the stored data and generate reports. And then the final level allows for remote test control where I can actually open a test and start and stop a test. So what I'm going to do is create user names and passwords that are unique to each one of these levels. So when I connect to this the first time, it's going to ask for my username and password. I'm going to enter the first level password that just allows me to view what is happening. So if I were running a test, I can click view and control. I could see what is happening. In this case, I'm just in system check. We'll do a little bit more of a demonstration in a bit. But if I hit start, it's going to ask me for a username and password. If I go to report, in order to view data, it always brings me to, so browse save data. Again, it's going to ask me for that password so I can enter that in here. And now I'm going to have access to my data folder. From there, I could find a test. I can see the data that is there for that test. All right, so now that we have our web server configured, the next thing that we're going to do, we did some basic tests. I'm okay with that. I'm going to save these settings 
and I'm going to leave this open in Vibration View. Just going to leave it connected, and we will come back to this when I remote desktop in from another PC and actually access that web server. The one piece of information that I have to remember is in this web server, I need to know this IP address. Now, if you want to make this visible to the outside world, so if I have a customer that is in their office or I want don't have remote desktop capabilities to VPN into the company domain, uh, you may need the assistance of an IT professional to set some of this up, especially if your company has firewalls and other things to worry about. There are ways to do this appropriately, but it does take somebody who has the ability to look at the firewall settings and allow this through. So I have VPN access to our company website and company uh, servers, so I can remote desktop in from my laptop at my home and access a PC on the same network as my control PC in this case. And then I can use this information to view that web server without having to remotely log into my control PC, which would require multiple users signing in and signing out and can create some chaos as to who has access. Next, we are going to talk about how to set up a live stream in YouTube. So in my web browser, I'm going to navigate to youtube.com. And in this case, I am already signed into my YouTube account. Uh, once I'm signed into a YouTube account, I can click on this video camera with the plus, create a video and more in the top right hand corner. When I click on that, I can click go live and it's going to bring me to the YouTube studio where I can set up a webcam. Create a new stream and I'm going to call it VR Shaker Video Demonstration. And I don't want to make this public, so I'm going to make it private so that only I can see it. I can set up a, what it's for, we'll call it science and technology, and have to answer a few questions, and I can click create stream. Now the first time you create this stream, you may need to wait 24 hours for YouTube to approve your rights as a creator to stream to YouTube. So there may be a little bit of a delay here, but in this case, I can now go ahead and create my stream in OBS Studio. The key piece of information that I need to get from YouTube is the stream key. The stream key here is a very private thing because anybody with that stream key can post videos and can push content to your stream. So you have to be very careful about the stream key. Uh, just click copy it and it will copy that to the clipboard. We will use that in our OBS Studio configuration. That's all we need to do in YouTube for the initial setup. Now we need to go into OBS Studio, which is a free software that we downloaded. In OBS Studio, we need to configure our Shaker stream. So let me just get rid of this one. First, I need to add a source. In this case, it is a video capture device. Going to create new, and you can see that it has found my HD USB camera. This is just a USB webcam that I have, and if I move this over a little bit, I can pre-position it, get it pointed at my shaker where I would like it, and I'm just going to leave all this at default and drag this out so it fills the whole screen. There I can see my video. And now I'm going to can look at my settings. 
and I need to go to stream. And this is where my YouTube stream key that I copied is going to get pasted. I'm just going to paste that in there, click apply, and I can hit start streaming. I should get a green light down here. Everything, I'm live, I'm counting. Now, if I go back to my stream setup, if I refresh this page, I should see my live stream coming in. And now I can click go live. Go live is going to take this recording and it's going to push it up into the world. Uh, one cool feature of YouTube is you can actually use enable DVR. So if something does happen, I can always go back and view. I can use it as a DVR function so I can go back and see where something happened on my live stream. All right, so that concludes my setup of my live stream. Again, all I did is in OBS Studio, added a source in the settings menu, set up my stream and paste it in my stream key that I got from YouTube and then clicked start streaming. So that is pushing this video content up to YouTube and then in my web browser, on YouTube, I can now view this video. If I wanted to, I could go to full screen and view that quite rapidly. All right, so now I am at home and logged into via a VPN, the company domain, accessing a computer that I have access to via VPN remote desktop. And in this PC, in the one that my remote desktop PC, I'm going to open a web browser and navigate to my IP address for my web server. Now, I have a few options. I can view and control, I can view the vibration view screen, or I can browse saved data. And we're just gonna jump straight to view and control. I need to type in my password. Sign in. And now I can view what is happening. So if I wanted to open a profile, can sign in and now I can see all of the different profiles that I might want to run. Uh, we'll just pick one out of the library. Um, we'll just do a, f a nice flat random test. So I'm going to click on that test. It's going to open it. And now I could hit start. I have my amplifier already configured to run. I have everything set up appropriately for my input channels and my test setup. All of that is pre-configured and pre-set up when I set up the actual system. So now uh, I have this up and running. The next thing that I'm going to do is view my camera. I can do this by going to YouTube. Once I'm in to my account, I can view my stream. If I just go to again to this video, it will open. And I can click on my live stream.
I can view this. Now this live stream can be shared to uh, different types of users. So you can share the URL, you can do whatever is beneficial, whether you're sharing it with a customer or you are sharing it with other employees. Uh, you can change the type of stream that it is if you want it private or public or um, something that only you have the ability to view, Google has, or YouTube and Google have that capabilities. But it's as simple as that. There I can view my live stream on a completely different machine in a different part of the world. And I can view that live stream while viewing the data. From here, I could generate a report if I chose to. When I click report, it's going to let me look at my different report templates that I already have saved. Uh, if I wanted to, I can just create an all graphs report. And it will do that for me. And once it's completed, it will download that report. I can open it in the software, in Word in this case, and view my report of what was happening on the shaker at that moment in time. All right, that concludes the video. Thank you for your time.